Hello and welcome to QTV Sports This Week. I'm Shane Holsey. And I'm Will Connerly. Last week, professional athletes took a break for a few days to protest games. And when they came back, they were all united on one knee for the national anthem. This footage is prior to the Clippers and Mavericks game. And this was a common scene when the NBA did make its return to the playoffs. Fans, players, athletes, coaches, journalists, administrators, owners, and executives felt the effects of the players' decision to not play. They were heard as the world of sports recognized the importance of unity amid many polarizing atmospheres. We're not sure what comes next, but QU head football coach Gary Bass had his team unite as one over the weekend. The QU football family is committed to creating a positive environment together. We can collectively learn, understand, and embrace racial, cultural, and spiritual differences that make us special and unique. We will continue to use our voice positively to positively impact our communities, campus, and program. Creating change is not someone else's job, it's our job. We have a voice. It is our job and commitment to create change. Together, as a family, we will continue to fight racial injustice and come together as one. There was support for the team as they all united and posted that picture with that message from Coach Bass and members of the community. They say Father Time is undefeated and one active MLB player still finding success at the highest level. And to top it off, it was his birthday too. See how this Cardinals player turned back the clock on Sunday afternoon. The St. Louis Cardinals entered Sunday on a four-game losing streak, scoring a combined six runs in those games. And after tough losses in the first two games of their series with the Indians, the Cards needed a strong outing. And who else would they turn to but the birthday boy himself, Adam Wainwright, who turned 39 years young on Sunday. He would get plenty of run support in this one to Bush Stadium. We go. The Indians would get to Wainwright early, top of the second, no score. The Indians Tyler Naquin smacks this 1-0 pitch from Wainwright to right and it just sneaks over the wall 2-0 Cleveland. The Cardinals would strike back in the bottom half. Now tied 2-2. Dylan Carlson, boys, he hit into some tough luck this season. He grounds one sharply just inside the first baseline. Matt Carpenter and Dexter Fowler score to put the Redbirds on top. 4-2. Speaking of Mr. Fowler, to the bottom of the seventh we go. 5-2 Cardinals. Fowler gets a pitch to his liking and drives it into the Cardinal bullpen in right center, fourth homer of the season for Dexter, and it extends the Cardinals lead to 6-2. The way Wayne was pitching today, he didn't, or Sunday, he didn't need much insurance, but he gets just that in the bottom of the eighth. This Yadier Molina base knock drives in another as Paul DeYoung comes around from second base and just sneaks under the tag to make it 7-2. And on his 39th birthday, the oldest starting pitcher in the big leagues, Adam Wainwright, Tosses his 29th career complete game. Wayne and Yachty share a hug after the final out, COVID style, masks and all, but there's no masking just how wonderful Wainwright was on Sunday. Nine strikeouts, two walks, four hits, 122 pitches, a birthday masterpiece from old Uncle Charlie. Cardinals win 7-2. The team the Cardinals are chasing, the Chicago Cubs, wrapped up their series in the Queen City against the Reds on Sunday. Let's just say the Cubbies brought their home run swing to the ballpark. They would make some history in the process as well. We begin in the top of the fourth, no score. That is until Kyle Schwarber promptly unloads on a 2-0 pitch from Luis Castillo, 1-0 Cubs on Schwarber's eighth long ball 
of the season. Two batters later, same score. Jason Hayward, he says goodbye to this 2-2 pitch from Castillo. Not quite the majestic blast that Schwarber put into orbit, but it counts just the same. Two zip north siders. Top of the fifth, now 2 nothing Cubbies. Switch hitter Ian Happ. This isn't your prototypical leadoff hitter. He's got some pop. He drives this one to center just over the outstretched glove of Shogo Akiyama, and the Cubs lead doubles to 4 0. Top six now. Here's Hayward again. He turns around a 93 mile an hour heater and smokes it to right for his second home run of the day and fifth of the season. Top of the seventh, 5 1 Cubbies. Ian Happ once more starting to notice a trend here. He gets a hanging breaking ball from Robert Stevenson. Does not miss it. Home run number nine for Mr. Happ. And it's 6-1 Cubs. Top of the ninth now. Base is juice for Schwarber. No, he didn't. Oh, yes, he did. It's grand salami time. 444 feet almost into the Ohio River. And with that, the Cubs become the first team in MLB history to have three outfielders hit two home runs each in a game. They trounce the Reds 10-1. to We've got a new segment coming your way. We'll debate a hot topic. You won't want to miss it. Welcome back. Director Ryan Coogler penned an emotional tribute to Chadwick Boseman, the star of the 2018 blockbuster hit Black Panther. Boseman died Friday after a four-year battle with colon cancer. He was 43 years old. In a statement, Coogler says he had no idea about Boseman's fight with cancer because the actor was a private person. Coogler hoped to reunite with Boseman for the Black Panther sequel. He says he is broken, knowing he won't be able to work with or talk to the award-winning star ever again. He called Bozeman a caretaker, a leader, a man of faith, dignity, and pride. Bozeman also played Jackie Robinson in the movie 42 and passed on the same day that MLB players wore number 42 for Jackie Robinson Day. Former NBA player Cliff Robinson has died of lymphoma at the age of 53. Former All-Star was a Husky at the University of Connecticut. Robinson helped UConn gain national notoriety when they won the NIT championship in 1988. He was then drafted to the Portland Trailblazers in 1989. Robinson had an 18-year career in the NBA, winning two finals with the Trailblazers. Many of Robinson's former team, teams and teammates honored him in tributes shared on social media. UConn tweeted Saturday, their basketball family mourns the loss of a legendary player. On Saturday, college football began, and it was the first college football game in the COVID-19 era. Social justice has taken front and center across the world of sports. A demonstration of social unity before kickoff as Central Arkansas and Austin Peay locked arms with each other and raised their fists at kickoff to show solidarity with their teammates. 2,000 fans were allowed in the stands during the game, which showcased a different atmosphere and the traditional vibrance of college football kickoffs. The coaches and everyone on the sideline were required to wear masks. A man sits with an I can't breathe shirt. Officials wore masks. Cheerleaders wore masks. And the game came down to the final play. Bears quarterback Braylon Smith led a game-winning drive capped off by a 10-yard touchdown pass to the wand Winningham. UCA starts off 2020 on the right foot with a 24-17 victory. Sticking with the football theme, Will, I want to propose this question to you. With the decision looming around college football, you're an NFL prospect destined to go high, high in the draft and make millions and millions of dollars. What do you do? Yeah, Shane, that's an interesting question. And I think what do you do depends on what conference you're in. We've now seen 
college football, high school football, and professional football getting ready to start. But the Hawks, when we talk about the GLVC, their home conference, they decided to defer to the spring. Many other conferences has done the same thing. I wouldn't want to waste eligibility in the spring for a shortened season. What do you think? If they've been waiting so long to play, why would, why would they not? I mean, with, with or without eligibility concerns, the tradition of college football has been disrupted by this pandemic, and not playing in the spring could have negative, effect, negative effects because players could be rusty come next fall, which that season isn't guaranteed either. Well, I would think that the NCAA will give eligibility back because the season will be shortened and unconventional in the spring. However, they may not want to play because they could get hurt. National champion LSU had its top receiver, Jamar Chase, opt out of the college football season this fall. Could that be the norm? With only three Power Five conferences playing this fall and the college football playoffs still happening, could this be a year where we see a non-power team make the playoff, say Memphis or UCF maybe? That could be the case, but what would it mean for the record book? Does it count? Still, if teams like Ohio State, a member of the Big Ten who has moved their season, isn't in the conversation, I would be skeptical. Absolutely. Well, now we head to trivia. Lock in, KU Hawk fans. Three years ago today, the Quincy women's soccer team beat Ohio Dominican 1-0. We ask you, who scored the lone goal for the Hawks that day? Was it A, Natalie Quisenberry, B, Abby Pulliam, C, Mackenzie Reef, or D, Katie Heiglenstein. Stay tuned to find out the answer and to learn about what else happened on this day in Hawk history. Before the break, we asked you this. Three years ago today, the Quincy women's soccer team defeated Ohio Dominican 1-0. Who scored the only goal for the Hawks? And your answer is, drum roll please, D, Katie Heiglenstein. The senior found the back of the net just 8 minutes and 15 seconds into the game off a corner deflection. The Hawks went 17-4-1 and made it to the Sweet 16 for the fourth time in program history. It all started three years ago today. And the Lady Hawks also defeated nationally ranked Lynn University eight years ago today to begin their campaign. And that's when the Hawks went 16-3 and two and made an NCAA tournament. A year ago today, the Quincy women's tennis team started off their season with a victory over Webster University. The Hawks won the match six to one over the Gorlocks. And to conclude our trip through the archives, women's volleyball came back from down two sets against Wisconsin Parkside. Sarah Brown had 10 kills and seven blocks in the match two years ago. She returns to Quincy this season for her junior year and was the highest hitting percentage, had the highest hitting percentage in the GLBC last season. Head coach Mark Jones and the women's volleyball team will have to wait, though, until the spring to compete. Despite most fall sports getting postponed, a few sports still surge ahead. The ladies and gentlemen of the QU golf teams begin their seasons in the coming weeks. The ladies tee it up for the first time September 14th at the two-day UND Fall Invitational. The Hawks feature five incoming freshmen after graduating three seniors last season. As for the gentlemen, they open their season a week after the ladies. Quincy Country Club will be the site of the Culver Stockton Invitational on September 21st. The Hawks bring an experienced group to the links this fall as they return three seniors, three incoming freshmen, four juniors, and one sophomore 
will join seniors Nick Messenger, Nathan Habing, and Colby Rodemick in their trek around the GLVC. The ladies will play in four tournaments this fall, while the men will compete in five. Both teams will conclude their fall seasons with the McKendree Bearcat Invitational October 19th and 20th. Sticking with the golf theme, Sunday marked the final round at the BMW Championship, the final cutoff before the PGA's Tour Championship this coming Thursday. The tournament came down to the 72nd and final hole. We jump right to the 18th green. Down one shot, Dustin Johnson has this speedy left to right, 43-footer for birdie to force a playoff. And how about this read? He's been putting the ball well lately, but this might be the best one yet. Center cut, red to perfection. And with that, we head to a sudden death playoff. DJ against John Rahm. The two would play the 18th again, and Rahm has this monster of a birdie putt from 66 feet. For some context, that's six feet longer than the distance from the pitcher's mound to home plate. And how about this perfect strike? Are you kidding me? He sinks it. Two of the best players in the world trading blows. Yeah, get fired up, Mr. Ron, the putt of his life. But DJ would have a chance to answer. He has another lengthy birdie putt to try to extend the playoff. He gives it one heck of an effort, but it doesn't quite have enough mustard on it. And John Rahm wins an instant classic. He shoots a final round 64 and the exclamation point to his round with that 66 footer in the playoff. Wow, what a finish. And from a basketball court. To a voting station. Coming up, check out what the Lakers and the Staples Center are doing for this upcoming election. of three professional soccer teams say he's going to sell them amid an investigation into his language and conduct. Del Loy Hansen owns a Major League Soccer's Real Salt Lake in Utah. On Thursday, The Athletic reported he has used the N-word and the word thug when referring to black people. In a statement, he apologizes for not filtering his language and for being insensitive. Hansen also owned a women's team called the Utah Royals FC and a USL team called the Real Monarchs. From a basketball arena to a voting station, the Los Angeles Lakers announced on Saturday that the team is partnering with the Staples Center owners AEG and local leaders to make the arena vote center for the upcoming presidential general election this fall. The announcement comes a day after the NBA and the Players Union announced teams would work to turn their arenas into voting locations for election in November. Athletes and sports teams have been vocal about racial justice and the importance of voting this election following the shooting of Jacob Blake in Kenosha, Wisconsin. The U.S. election takes place on Tuesday, November 3rd. Thank you for joining us on this first edition of QTV Sports this week. You can send us news tips at qumedia at quincy.edu. Join us next Monday as we continue to cover everything you need to know about QU Athletics and the entire sports world. For Will Connerly, I'm Shane Holsey. Take care and have a great rest of your day.